Hello everyone. So let, let's start with the next topic that is estimation and tendering. Estimation is a technique by which we can get approximation of first is the required material, second investment to be made and third time to be taken for completion of any project. Next is purpose of estimation and costing. It is necessary to know about the required material and cost before starting any new project. Hence it is necessary to make a complete project report. Sometimes it becomes difficult to continue a project due to unavailability of material or money crisis. Thus estimation is necessary as it gives idea about amount of money involved, availability of material etc. The project report which include a complete knowledge about the work to be done such as necessary drawings or plans, material required with its costing and the sequence of operation of work to be performed has to be mentioned in the project report. The next is essential elements of estimation and costing. So the first one is specification of material. The specification and cost of all necessary material should be known at the time of preparing a report. It will be very difficult to purchase the material from market without the knowledge of the specification. Next is market survey. The market cost of material is that cost with which the market material can be purchased. After estimation, it becomes necessary to purchase the material. So, market survey has to be conducted. After market survey, quotations are invited from related shops and the cost given in the quotations of different shops are compared and the material is purchased at lowest rate. Next is price list. By market survey, the estimator gets the price list of material and this list is updated according to the market rate changes. Hence, at the time of estimation and costing, the price list available at that time should be considered. Next is material and labor cost. The best way to determine material cost is to prepare a detailed material and cost list. For example, it should consist of name of the item with specification, required quantity, rate and total cost. And labor cost are decided by first as per the work duration and work amount, second as per the unit of work basis and third as per percentage of material cost. A trained technician may cost 150 rupees per day but the same technician in rural area may cost 90 rupees per day. So, hence it is necessary to decide the labor cost. Next is knowledge of purchase system. It is the duty of the purchase officer to purchase the material at the lowest rate. The departmental officer is responsible for proper storage and issue of material. Any shortfall in the material has to be accounted and issued. Therefore, complete knowledge of purchase system is necessary. The department has to ensure that the project work is not stopped due to lack of material. Next is contingencies. During the completion of project, there can be a certain emergency expenses which cannot be calculated while preparing the project estimation report. Such additional cost is known as contingencies. Next one is overhead charges. In addition to the total estimated expenditure, there are other expenses such as government taxes, additional expenses on labor, etc. So, these are known as the overhead charges. Next is supervision charges. A contract is given to professional, trained and expert engineer to supervise the project work and offer expert opinion. So, this will come under the supervision charges. Next is production charges. The production charges is nothing but the cost of material plus the labor charges plus the overhead expenses. This will form in the production charges which we have already considered. Next is profit. The profit 
are calculated on the basis of total expenses involved on the project and the contract money signed while signing the an agreement next one is storage and transportation so after the purchase of material the cost involved to transport the material to store like the labor expenses on loading and unloading transport of material to the work site this all will be coming under the transportation and storage the last one is tools and plant charges so the machinery equipment and the tools required to conduct the work will come under the the charges will be coming under the tool and plant charges next topic is tendering tendering is nothing but an invitation from the owner to the contractor to execute some work at specified cost within specified time under certain terms and conditions now what do you mean by tender notice the information to be made available for certain heavy purchase through the newspaper advertisement is called as the tender notice here is a paper article of tender notice as you can see that the company name is hyderabad electrical supply company this is an invitation to bid you can see that the information given in this tender notice is name of the work earnest money then bid submission date and time bid opening date and time so all this information is given in the tender notice tender notice will contain the following information first name of department inviting tender next is type of work and location next is designation of officer inviting tender the next is last date and time of receipt of tender next is period of available of tender document next cost of tender document next time of completion of the type of tender next is earnest money to be deposited along with the tender next date and time and place of opening the tender and the last is designation of officer opening the tender so all this information will be there in the tender notice as we have seen the example of the tender notice in paper article so that's all for this video thank you